Um, so everyone, uh, we're go ahead, gonna go ahead and start the second part of our presentation. Uh, okay. We have Larry Capone from ProSource. Uh, maybe Larry, you can introduce uh, your, your company a little bit about what you do. Sure. And give us a little bit of background. That would be great. Sure. Well, I used to be proud of how long I've been doing this. Now I'm a little embarrassed. This is my 36th year in the business. I started with ProSource in 1984 back in Boston, moved out here in 1989. Uh, ProSource has had an office in the Bay Area since 1987. So we've, we've had a, a pretty good presence with uh, about 33 years in the Bay Area, which has been great. We've worked with companies. Um, I mean, it used to be uh, ProE was our tool of choice out there because that was before SolidWorks came along. So in 19, I guess it was 1996, 97, SolidWorks came on the, um, the um, uh, come up, came out and uh, started uh, gaining popularity. So um, our focus is uh, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, board designers, hardware engineers, anything, any uh, company that needs any kind of um, design to do with building a product. So if any company that's building a product, whether it's a semiconductor company, life sciences, uh, medical, consumer electronics, IOT, uh, we've worked with Facebook, Google, was all, we've also worked with a lot of the small startup companies. So we provide contractors, full-time resources, um, contract to hire, uh, anything in between that. So um, I guess our, our sweet spot is anyone from a detailed drafter on up to full-scale engineers and everything in between. So um, uh, we're pretty proud about how long, about how long we've been in the area. Um, the Bay Area, probably within, you know, 40, 50 miles of San Jose. So we go up to the North Bay, East Bay, Peninsula, South San Jose, uh, and everything in between. And um, we have a pretty good team, although we're all working virtually right now. We have a great team of uh, recruiters and sales folks. Who are, we have a sales side who we're out, we're out, the salespeople are out looking for positions with companies, and the recruiters are talking to candidates. So we bring the whole team together and hopefully, uh, hopefully find, help people find jobs, whether it's contract full-time or maybe a contract that's going to go full-time at some point. I think, Alan, you've worked for us in the past. Uh, um, I have, in fact. Yeah, you guys are a great company. You know, uh, you, you brought up a good point about uh, you guys starting out mostly with ProE. Mm -hmm. uh, what does the landscape look like in terms of, I guess, the number of SolidWorks jobs out there these days as opposed to other yeah. tools like ProE or Creo or NX? Are there mostly more SolidWorks jobs in, in the Valley these days, or are there other tools that are equally popular? Well, yeah, that's a great question and um, observation. The, uh, it used to be we got, you know, 70, 80% SolidWorks, 20, 30% Creo maybe, or 20% Creo, and then uh, some auto, uh, Autodesk um, software products inventor. But now, um, actually, NX is, um, the reason NX has become a little bit more prevalent is because Apple uses NX. And some, anytime someone leaves NX, uh, Apple to go to another company, they'll bring NX with them. Uh, so there's several companies in the Bay Area now that have been using NX and it's become more mainstream, I guess. Um, Interesting. Yeah. But the SolidWorks is still the, uh, the choice of the, 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 the tool of choice out there. Most, most of the startups are using SolidWorks. So it's a great, it's a great tool. Very intuitive, as you know. Uh, it's easy to learn, easy to use. And that's what it's all about. When it comes down to CAD at these companies, they want to, it's just a tool. So, uh, but SolidWorks is really uh, the, the tool of choice out there. Hey, are you, are you noticing that the, the demand for mechanical drafters and designers are kind of dwindling as opposed to the demand for mechanical engineers? And do you think it's attributed to the automation of, of the software and SolidWorks where they make drawings and drafting so easy that they, they kind of are saying, well, yeah, never mind what the drafter, we'll just push it on the engineer. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, absolutely what we're seeing out there what they're finding is some of the engineers they can uh, they can do the work themselves it's a simple task although not as simple we've we've had some calls recently where they like we work with kla as, as an example as one of our customers and they want they want they have a bunch of engineers that are doing the design and drafting and they want the engineers to focus on what they do best so they need design drafters so i think with the i think with the larger companies the lam researches the uh the klas uh, the Googles, they can afford the luxury of bringing designers and drafters in, but the, the, the small startups are not really hiring designers and drafters. So it depends on the company, uh, how big they are. I think the larger you go with it, the larger company there is, the, the more affordable, the, 
the uh, they, they can have they have the luxury of bringing designers and drafters in. Got so it. That's Got that's kind of what I'm seeing out there. And and as far as these uh, these companies, most of them all require some sort of SolidWorks experience or training. They don't like to hire people that are kind of I guess fresh out of college, or or is that something that that you've noticed or is for like new recruits, is there generally another path that they should follow as far as job hunting? Yeah, well, what I would say is, you know, we can get into this a little later or we can talk about it now. LinkedIn is a great tool, but for the most part, they're con when they call ProSource or another contract firm, they're expecting us to find them people that they wouldn't necessarily, necessarily be able to find on their own. They can go to the schools on their own if they want, but if they're looking for experienced people, they usually call us. If they're looking for entry level, there's probably not a real demand for them or a real desire for them to call us because they could probably find people on their own. Got it. How's about certification? Do things like uh, SolidWorks certifications, like your CSWA or CSWP, does that help with landing a job? I think it does, yes. Uh, and you can get those, as you know, Alan, you can get those through uh, Hawkridge, Go. Um, maybe, do you guys offer that at, at, at the school where you work? We, we do we do use the, the certification program as part of our final actually oh, okay. um, it, it, it kind of helps helps me not have to create a test yeah and it helps them get a certification through SolidWorks which is great I think it helps you know I, I think it helps having the certification but it helps more if you go in and you can prove that you can run the SolidWorks sometimes you can get certified but you can't you know you, there's a way of getting doing projects and uh, being a little bit more efficient so a lot of it's um, how you go in and perform. It's one thing having the certification, but if you can go in and, and, and perform, then that's, that's really what's most important. Uh, and for, for us, we check references on people. So we'll find out where someone's worked before and I'll call the manager there and find out how the skill sets are. So that's how we assess uh, our candidates. Got it. Wow, now um, you mentioned something about LinkedIn. Uh, it's kind of always good to search on there. Uh, mm -hmm. How about the changes in the interview process these days? Uh, I know like before when I was interviewing for jobs, I used to have my old paper portfolio. So when I go into an interview, I can yeah. show off all the work that I've done. Yeah. Uh, how are interviews, are, are interviews different these days? Are they requiring a lot more from, from, from are employers requiring a lot more from what I remember having to do from a long time ago? Well, these days it's a little different. Everyone's doing things on Zoom conferences. It's the typical, <laughs> the last six months, it's been a little challenging. Uh, but I will say that companies are hiring people after a Zoom conference or a phone, they, they feel confident enough, we'll, we'll, off, we'll uh, come up with a couple of candidates for them to talk to. So we're not in normal times right now when you think about what's happening. But in normal times, I would say you, know, that you want to have a portfolio. If you have a portfolio, you can sit down with a client, you can show them, you can open it up on a laptop or a P, you, know, you can open up a little PDF. Most of my candidates now have a... Um, and it doesn't have to be anything elaborate, just a basic portfolio of some of the work they've done, as long as it isn't confidential, they've signed an NDA. So uh, I would say it's very advantageous to have a, uh, a nice little PDF set up so you can go in, simply open it up and show, show the uh, customer or the client what you can do with SolidWorks or some of the other CAD tools. And then as far as your resume, I know there's like websites out there like Wix, for example. Is that mm -hmm. something that's becoming really popular for showing both your resume and, and like you said, the work, work done and stuff like that? I think it's all a personal uh, preference when it comes to resumes, Alan. Uh, you know, I always recommend a, a brief summary of your skill sets. And you can actually do that. I recommend this to all the candidates we're talking to, that they come up with a marketing statement and they put a, a separate document together in a bullet point format. So maybe the 10 or 15 strengths that you've had or the or strengths, uh, things you've worked on in the past. So come up with a nice bullet point marketing statement, call it a marketing statement. That's what we call it. And um, because what's happening these days is customers are seeing, they're seeing one, they're seeing a hundred resumes for, for two positions and every resume kind of blends into the other one. So how do you differentiate yourself as a, as a candidate? So come up with a nice marketing statement or a skill sets, a uh, list of your skill sets and what you can do. And then, um, you know, mention some of the projects you've worked on at these companies. Okay. I know I want, I want to touch a little bit now about, uh, I know, I know you don't deal as much with uh, entry level engineers uh, you, and you had mentioned uh, things like uh, that companies that, that are looking for entry level engineers, they can go and do that themselves. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess as far as if you are job hunting and you, you're kind of new in the industry, uh, 
you do recommend that they approach companies direct as opposed to trying to go through job shots? I would say contact the, the companies directly, do whatever you can to avoid HR. You want to get to the hiring managers. And nowadays it's easy with LinkedIn. If you look, you're, you're laughing. Um, <laughs> nothing against HR, but uh, <laughs> with the tools that are available now, you know, you have LinkedIn where you can put a company name in and then put like Emmy manager. You can find people's names through LinkedIn pretty easily or more valuable is if you're, if you're somehow connected, maybe a second or third connection at somebody with somebody at that company. That's why it's so, it's so important to build the network of uh, people you have in your network on LinkedIn. Like I've got, I've got over 4,000 people on my network. Wow. First, wow. first connections. Well, that's my job is to connect, but um, I've been re I've been uh, contacted by people, second and third connections that, that got in touch with me only because I knew somebody that they knew. So very important. Uh, one of the most important things I could say today is build your LinkedIn network up because most, most employers, they're using LinkedIn more than they are using Monster and Career Builder and some of these and Indeed. So they're using LinkedIn as their, their number one tool to find people. And, and vice versa, you should use LinkedIn to find companies. Sure. Now, I've, I've heard stories about some employers, what they do is they, they go as far as if uh, they start with your LinkedIn profile, they'll go as far as digging into your Facebook and in, into your personal profile as well right? to kind they of will. build character. Is that correct? They will. And, and that's why I, I, I have two kids and I told both, you know, one of, actually one of my daughter, one of my kids, my daughter's a recruiter for uh, Google, ironically enough. Uh, but um, I'm not sure if they do that, but a lot of companies will look at someone's Facebook. So I tell my, I told my two children, don't put anything on Facebook that you don't want the world to see. So be very careful politically. You shouldn't put anything political. People right now these days, it's crazy with all the political things. They're putting things on their Facebook. And I just, uh, I would recommend staying away from that because you don't know who's looking on the other side. So that's interesting advice. That, that's really good stuff, especially in this day of digital age. Yeah. Um, there's so much information out there. It, it's good to know, uh, know this type of, uh, you have these tips. Now, I mean, can, as far as resume, I know back in the days, they used to have professional resume writers yeah. uh, that would help out. Is that still something that you recommend? I have, would, a person, yeah, recommend? I, I have a person that I could recommend that she's really good at writing resumes. I've referred probably 15 or 20 people to her. But, you know, on the entry level, I would just keep it simple. I don't think you need a professional resume writer. I think you can use templates. There's all kinds of things you can Google right now for templates and just keep it simple. I think once you get into your career, once you get 10, 15, 20 years into your career, then you can start utilizing a resume writer. But I think at the entry level, I think it's important just to keep it simple. Talk about some of the projects you've done in school and your labs. And um, a lot of it's just getting in touch with the right person. Use your personal contacts to find out if they know people at these companies. Because people are, in the end, in the end, companies... Managers want to work with people they feel comfortable with. They can get around the technical challenges. It's the personality. That's, that's what really makes a break somebody at the end. Okay. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about ProSource in general. Uh, yeah. So I was able to cruise around on the website. I saw that you guys have a landing page for um, job seekers and then also another page for recruiters. Yeah. Um, specifically on the, the job seeker side. Um, I know they, they have a bunch of posts. You guys keep postings. Are those all current postings that you guys keep? No, they're not. Some of them are, uh, some of them, unfortunately for us, some of them are a couple months old and we should, we should go through and clean those up. <coughs> we have recently, we've recently gotten pretty busy in the last couple of weeks. It was pretty, pretty quiet for, for a couple of months. This summer was, was pretty quiet, but uh, recently we've had a lot more calls from companies. Excuse me one second. Lately, and just in the last couple of weeks, we've had a lot of calls, a lot of inquiries from companies that are looking for resources. So it, it has picked up. Uh, unfortunately for us, sometimes we don't know what's happening on the other end. We do the best we can to qualify uh, jobs when they come in. You know, how long has the job been open for? Why? These are questions we ask the customers. How long have you been looking for? Um, why are you looking? Can you tell us a little bit more about the specifics of the job? What are the details? So we try to do everything we can to qualify customers because, you know, we don't want, we don't want them wasting our time. Just like candidates, you know, you want to make sure you do your homework. You waste a lot of time and a lot of, you know, you only get about five or 10% of the jobs you apply for. So for sure. us, we're trying to cut the percentages down and try to save time and not, not send us on a wild goose chase and the candidate on a wild goose chase. 
So as far as then, as far as job postings that you find and then on like LinkedIn and other websites, it's almost safe to say that not all of those are active postings. Oh, I would definitely, like, yeah, definitely. Okay. I mean, yeah, things it, change. In, in defense of the companies, things change. I mean, they, they lose their funding or they're, they have a hiring freeze. I just met with a customer today that's had a hiring freeze for three months and they're, they're opening things up again in the next couple of weeks. So it's a fluid uh, situation um, a lot got of times. And we yeah, don't so, know. So, so oh. from that point of view, then it's also probably would be best as far as to get your resume out uh, rather than trying to send them to any particular job postings, just get them to people directly to you, for example. And then that way you'll have them on file and you'll yes. have it in mind. Um, now to a lot of, a lot of the people in our group, uh, again, a lot of students, I have a lot of students that, uh, that come through our school. Um, definitely is that just, we could just pass your email along or we just visit the website and is there a link that you guys check regularly? You could have them, uh, you can have them email me. I can give you my, you've got my email address, but I can I give do you. have your email address. Um, yeah. I, is it okay? I can pass that, Absolutely. pass that along. Absolutely. Okay. Alan. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, the other thing I could do is I, I have a, um, I actually have a, um, tips and tricks on interviewing that I could send out to you, Alan, and you can pass that on if you'd like. Yeah, uh, that would be great. I think that would be awesome. It's a basic set of instructions, but some of it, you know, just keep an eye in contact, not talking through the interviewer, you know, just a pause is okay sometimes. So it just gives some simple tips and tricks when you get that interview, because you don't want to, the old, the old saying goes, you never have a second chance to make a first impression. So, you know, people get nervous. So settle, just being prepared, being prepared is 80% of it. Going in, showing up on time for an interview or a Zoom call, uh, very important. So uh, I have a list of uh, do's and don'ts of interviewing. Oh yeah, definitely would love to send that along. Hey, you know, um, Larry, I, I really appreciate your time. I think you got us a lot of good nuggets here as far as uh, information, tips, yeah. um, and just kind of learning a little bit more about the landscape of how, how things are going in the Bay Area as far as jobs for solid work. Happy to help. Happy to um, help. You know, yeah. I want to thank you. Thank you so much. You guys, uh, this is ProSource. And uh, I will, I guess after this video, I will pass along the information and get it added to our presentation. Great. Thanks, Alan. Hey, thanks, Larry. I appreciate good your luck. time. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Thank you.